In the first reading today, we have Saul. And Saul, as you may know, is the worst of the worst in the area of helping Christians. Because what he liked to do, he liked to go into the Christian homes, drag out the Christians, the believers, throw them into prison. So he wasn't the greatest guy. He did it with zeal. He, had to, he thought he was doing right. But he was really the worst of the worst. But then what happened, and, and the writer refers to this, is that Saul met the risen Lord. And we all know that phrase from Scripture where God spoke to Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? And when that conversation took place, Saul's heart was changed. And he went from being the worst of the worst to the best of the best. And today's first reading just reminds us that Saul spoke boldly, boldly about the risen Lord and to follow Jesus Christ, to listen to him and follow him. These events about Saul going from worst to worst to the best of the best just remind us God can change every one of us for the better. Now, we're all good already. Everything God has made is good. But we can even be made for the better if we open ourselves to God. Now, you know this stuff. But here's a little phrase from the second reading. This is God writing through St. John. And here's the little phrase. Beloved, that's us. Beloved, have confidence. Have confidence in God. Keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Have confidence, keep his commandments, do what pleases him. So just a reminder for all of us, have confidence in God at all times, in all places, in all events that you face. And this is difficult in our culture today. So many people are mad at God. I'll never follow that God because he allows us suffering. Even amid suffering and struggle, even amid this pandemic, even amid the death of a loved one, or our own struggles that we may face, we need to have confidence in God. And the reality is, how many times you ever hear, I'm not going to follow Jesus because he's no good. You never hear that. It's always this God character. Jesus tells us, when you see me, when you see that I love you so much, I'll die on the cross. When you see me, and all that, when you see me, you see God the Father. And so if you ever have a question on confidence in God the Father, look to Jesus. You will never find anything that Jesus did that would, you make, that would make you angry toward him. And so with God the Father. When you see me, says Jesus, you see the Father. So if you need to regain your confidence in God, turn to the Lord, Jesus. Remind us of what he taught us. And God the Father is just as good. Confidence in God. Secondly, Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. This is, again, just good for us. At times, we can get sucked into the culture and take in the habits of culture or society, and it's not really the command of God, some of the stuff we're doing. Most common one, gossip. Gossip, I do it. Most everybody does it, sadly, perhaps. I mean, perhaps everybody does it. Gossip is not a commandment of God. And yet, we say, well, I'm doing it. I often hear, well, you know, everybody's doing it. But that's not what we should be doing. Follow the command, commandments of God. Keep his commandments. Bad language, foul language would be another thing. So common. Thankfully, I don't hear much foul language here at the staff and things like that. Never do. But in the workplace, even in our schools, not our school here, but other schools at times, I've heard, I've seen, I've heard just bad language. It's become so commonplace, even on the media. And again, as a Christian, do you wish to change for the better? Have confidence in God, keep his commandments. Even stuff like just blowing off mass. 
Now, with the pandemic, we don't have to come. But again, it's so easy as a society and a culture to say, oh, I go here, I go here, I don't always go every week, stuff like that. Now, again, try to keep his commandments. And then you know, also can expand that to just much more broader. There are a lot, there are a lot, sadly, of immoral teachings, teachings that go against the commands of, of loving God that have been okayed by our society or even our government. And these things are not keeping with God's commandment. You know the list. The killing of an unborn child in the womb is always wrong, and yet we allow it. We allow it as a, co a government, as a people. Abortion, contraception, artificial contraception, euthanasia, killing someone because they're suffering. Again, there's, there, there's just a lot wrong with that. It may sound like offering comfort, but to allow ourselves to work with that person suffering. Not going into all that right now, though. Cohabitation before marriage that is so commonplace today and accepted, and yet it's not the command of God at all. Pornography, which again is so accepted in our society, and again, it's only destroying people. Same active same-sex unions, gender, gender reassignment, and the list can go on. I want to stress here, no matter what a sin may be, or an action that goes against the commandments of God, no matter what a sin may be, we have to, with every human being that I ever meet, and I do this poorly at times, I have to recognize the dignity of that person, that that person is a child of God, that person is important, that, child, that person des deserves dignity, but I also have to proclaim with prudence, love, and everything else, the truth of God that leads to love and that leads to life and to follow the way of God himself. God truly does no more than society at large. God does not have the fallen nature that we have. Finally, the third thing, have confidence in God, keep his commandments, and then do what pleases God. And what you're doing right here, this pleases God. You're coming to worship. I like to say that 98% of us, 98% of the time for all of us, 98% of the time, we do good. We do things that please God. That is great. Keep it up. It's the darn 2% in most of our lives that we just have to keep dealing with. Those are our sins or our failures at times of not following God's way. Do what pleases God. Keep working on using the virtues, those good habits, those things we do to build up family, build up friends, following the way of God, that 2% work on. And finally, then the gospel goes into vine and the branches. And that basically says again, stay connected with God. We're doing it here. By worship and the sacraments, we're connected with his church, which he founded. And then we have personal prayer that works on a personal relationship with God. And then we have helping others in love. And that again is reflecting the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. And finally, as you look at all these readings, every one of these readings this morning, they mention the Holy Spirit in a direct or indirect way. And it's the Holy Spirit, as we get into this Easter season and we move toward Pentecost, it is the Holy Spirit that will really play a major part in our lives to be changed for the better. As Mass continues, just ask God quietly during this Mass. God, I give you permission. Change me. Change me for the better. Let me have confidence in God. Let me keep his commandments. Let me do what, what pleases God. And let me stay connected to Jesus. And finally, let the Holy Spirit do his work. If we make that prayer right now this morning, I believe we will start to see the fruits of God working in our life. Take it to heart as Mass continues.